Hi everybody, I'm Mike Poland, the scientist in charge of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, and this is the monthly update for May 1st, 2022. I'm coming to you today from the Cascades Volcano Observatory in Vancouver, Washington. CVO is one of five observatories operated by the U.S. Geologic Survey in the United States. The others are in Hawaii, and Alaska, California, and of course Yellowstone. Now, unlike the other four, Yellowstone is a virtual volcano observatory. It exists only online. Well, there are some USGS scientists who work in Yellowstone based at California and Cascades observatories. And we also have scientists that are based in various state geologic surveys, universities, and research agencies around the country. Because YVO is a consortium of nine different institutions, scientists that study Yellowstone based all over the Western United States. Because we're a virtual observatory, all of the information, all of our work happens online. So you can actually go to the YVO webpage and look at any kind of monitoring data that are collected, whether it's seismic data or ground deformation data, whether the ground is going up or down, even geyser activity. We also try to put a lot of reports and com compilations of information online. And one of those reports is available this week. This is the YVO annual report for 2021. It's got all kinds of information about seismic activity during the year 2021, ground deformation, even research activities like geologic mapping or studies of Yellowstone Lake. So if you're interested in what happened in Yellowstone in 2021, what kind of research, what kind of activity, check out this report. It's available free online starting now. All right, now let's talk about what happened in Yellowstone during the month of April 2022. The University of Utah Seismograph Stations, which is responsible for the operation and maintenance of the Yellowstone Seismic Network, located 141 earthquakes in the Yellowstone region during the month of April. And this is pretty typical for the Yellowstone area. The largest earthquake of the month was a magnitude 2.5 earthquake that occurred north of West Yellowstone on April 30th. Now included in these 141 earthquakes were three small swarms. In the middle of April, there were 24 earthquakes that occurred to the north of West Yellowstone. Also in mid-April, another 20 earthquakes occurred in this little cluster here to the north-northeast of West Yellowstone. And finally, in early April, a small cluster of 14 earthquakes occurred to the south of West Thumb and Lewis Lake area in the south part of Yellowstone National Park. This sort of swarm activity happens all the time in Yellowstone. In fact, about 50% of all Yellowstone earthquakes occur as part of these small swarms. Most of them between the Hebgen Lake and Norris Junction area. This is the most seismically active part of Yellowstone National Park. Ground deformation has seen a continuation of the patterns that have been going on now for several years. Now this is vertical deformation at the White Lake GPS station on the east side of the caldera, the Sour Creek Resurgent Dome. Each blue dot represents one day of data. The entire plot spans the past two years. When you see upward trends, that's uplift, and downward trends indicate subsidence. And over the past two years, and in fact extending all the way back to 2015, the trend has been dominantly subsidence, interrupted during summer months by a pause in that subsidence or a slight amount of uplift, and that's due to groundwater that percolates from runoff into the subsurface. The trend of subsidence is continuing into today. It's occurring at a rate of about one inch or so per year. Moving to the other side of the caldera, the Mallard Lake Resurgent Dome, this is from a GPS site near Old Faithful, and we see the same sorts of trends. Now, the Signal gets much, much better here in September of 2020 when some of the trees around the site were removed. There was a fire nearby, and some of the trees were removed to reduce the fuel load in the area. You can see this overall subsidence interrupted during summer months by a pause or a slight amount of uplift, and then subsidence again. Now, this period in December of 2020 shows a small deviation from that, and that's because snow covered the antenna during a particularly intense winter storm. And then finally, there's the GPS site near the Norris Geyser Basin. We haven't seen much at all over the past two years at this particular site. Very, very minor trends in either direction, up or down. Then there's this large deviation again here in December of 2021, again due to snow covering the antenna. So not a whole lot of deformation in the immediate vicinity of Norris Geyser Basin. And finally, turning to Steamboat Geyser, everybody's favorite geyser, tallest geyser in the world, we went a month without an eruption, a major eruption at Steamboat. This is the temperature record in the steamboat outflow channel. All of these rises and falls are the daily temperature variations. And then towards the middle of the month of April, we started to see a little bit more fuzziness to this record. And that's due to minor eruptive activity. We tend to see more and more minor eruptive activity before a major eruption. So it doesn't look like steamboat is done putting on a show quite yet. Hopefully this minor activity will culminate in a major eruption at some point during the month of May 
and we'll hopefully see even more major eruptions uh, during the summer months. It's a, it's a spectacular sight, so hopefully Steamboat's not done just yet. Well, that does it for the May 1st, 2022 monthly report. Now, remember, if you have any questions at all, you can feel free to email us at ywobteam, that's all one word, at usgs.gov. Now, next month, we're going to be coming to you from Yellowstone National Park itself. All of the scientists that work as part of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory are going to be getting together in our first in-person meeting in four years. So next month, we'll be reporting from Yellowstone, talking about activity there and introducing you to some of the scientists that work as part of YVO. So until then, stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.